Straight up, this is one of the hardest fights to try and figure out on this card at Lightweight. We have Vince from Hell Pichel taking on Austin Thud Hubbard. And if you look at it for Austin Hubbard, out of the fights in the UFC, it's weird, right? You remember the fight where he had, what, what do they properly call it? Like compression syndrome in his leg oh. where you kind of got to cut it open every now and again. But you look at some of the losses. He loses Davi Hamosh who can grapple and wrestle. He loses to Mark Madsen, who's in the co-main event this weekend. Well, he's An pretty Olympian. good at wrestling. He won a silver medal at the Olympics. And then he lost to Joe Selecki, who can grapple and wrestle. And in those fights, it was tricky because in the other fights that he's in, he's a comeback king. He probably goes into the second or third round. He's like, coach, I'm good. Let me stand up. Or I'll do the Alexei Olenek where I sit my butt down and you le you hold my feet up. The sound of great cardio. Get some, you got to get the, the blood flowing back in your loins. You got to get ready for it. But for Austin Hubbard, he's probably like, hey, I'm good, coach. I'm ready to go. This is where it kicks in. Just like a Sasha Platnikov. Because for Hubbard, in the fight against Kyle Prepolek, boom, we're back. In the fight against Max Roshkov. Lost the first round, won the second round, and then he goes out there and beats Dakota Bush. And we said getting ready for that one, Bush was oddly one of the more game opponents that I think could kind of pick away at some of the issues that Austin Hubbard has in the cage. Well, I think Vince Pichel kind of does a, a lot of that, and he checks a lot of those boxes. And for Vince Pichel, the big thing for me, this is a guy that he's out of Simi Valley in California. He's always pretty well trained in California. But then I went to his Instagram, and you know, when you're looking at a 38-year-old's Instagram, it's kind of a weird bucket of muscles. Probably family photos, I'd assume. It's a mixed bag. For Vince, he's posting pictures where now he's training at the rival gym because Hubbard's been at Elevation for some time, and Vince Pichel's now at Factory X. So I'm wondering, with Vince Pichel, if you're training with a guy like, I don't know, say, Alexander Hernandez, how do you get ready for a fight like this against Austin Hubbard where style for style, they match up well, Pichelle wrestles well, and just look what he did to Jim Miller's last time out. He did look really good against Jim Miller, and I feel like that performance is kind of an outlier for Vince Pichelle, because up until that point, he never really had the upper level of competition in his career. I understand the Gregor Gillespie fight is a bit of an outlier, Joachim but... Joaquim Silva was good back then. I like Joaquim Silva, and I'm definitely in the minority on that. There's like three people out there. Like, he had a fun career, but I wouldn't say Joaquim Silva's the hell to die on. Which is for Vince Pichelle... He was always kind of fighting the same level of fighters, but he would keep on winning, and that was just kind of it. Long he, layoffs. Exactly. And then he finally did get that upper echelon guy against Gregor Gillespie, and you could tell it was just a step too far, because Vince Michelle, he does fight a little bit like Ally Quinta, to where, like, I've got good stand-up, but my stand-up's only good if you're a primary wrestler, and my wrestling's good, but, like, against other wrestlers, I myself can kind of get out-wrestled. And that's what we saw against the Gregor Gillespie in that fight. He just never could get a strike in going against Gillespie, and then once Gillespie was dedicated to those takedowns, you could tell that Pichel, A, just being at such an advanced age, he just couldn't really keep up with the younger Gregor Gillespie. His last two times out, though, against Roosevelt Roberts, listen, if you're gonna beat Roosevelt Roberts, it's how you're gonna beat him. You're gonna take him down. And that was the start of kind of like, hey... What's, what's the provincial and state park called? Roosevelt. Exactly. Got I, him. I thought John uh, Anik always said Roosevelt. My bad. So for Roosevelt Roberts, again, I felt like that fight very much was a stylistic... It was a very favorable matchup for Vince Pichel because all it was was I get to shoot takedowns and throw power punches on the outside and that's pretty much his bread and butter. This fight, more than any, does come down to Cardi and I know that's a bit of a cop-out because we say this all the time with Austin Hubbard fights, but, like, his cardio's that good. If fights if fights for 10 rounds, Austin Hubbard's record would not be 13-5. and five. I'm going to tell you this. I'm, I'm talking to you. If you're in your car, if you're on the airplane, if you're hanging out, studying tape at home, go back and watch Austin Hubbard when he fights Mark Madsen. Now, Mark Madsen's in your co-main event. We're going to talk about him soon. Mark Madsen has an issue with third rounds, and Austin Hubbard beat an Olympic silver medalist with his defensive wrestling and his cardio in just the third round. And the good thing about Austin Hubbard, too, was we were talking about Bia Malecki as to where she's good at striking with range, but then once you do get on the inside, she just kind of struggle. Austin Hubbard gets a lot of his work done at range, but when guys do collapse that distance on him, he does have good attacks going up the middle. He does have a really good flying knee. He does have just good knees in general, and that was something you started to see in that Marco Madsen fight was, okay, as Madsen gets a little bit more tired, that's when Hubbard was pulling it on. But the other thing you have to bring up is that Austin Hubbard is good at avoiding damage on the mat. I know he's been submitted, and Joe Selecki's a really, really good grappler, so it's going to happen, but at least when he does get taken down, he's not a guy who just gets mauled once he is on the ground. He is a good defensive grappler, but against those upper uh, those upper level jujitsu guys, he does tend to at least not get submitted. Now, the thing about Vince Michelle, and I do feel like he's a little bit different than some of the other grapplers that Hubbard's been in there with, is that 
he has really good wrestling, but I don't think the jujitsu is really the second kind of part to his game that a lot of those other grapplers are. Like, Davi Hamos, for instance, well, his whole game is jujitsu. He just so happens to be a really good wrestler. And Marco Madsen is a very good, constant grappler. He doesn't just go for the takedown and stop there. With Michelle, it will be interesting because if he does just kind of sit in the guard of Austin Hubbard, I do think Hubbard can at least make Pichelle work enough in that first round and get back up to his feet to where Hubbard will be able to use his cardio great in that second and third round and he will start to pull away. So I guess the real question comes down to how active will Pichelle be on top? Because if he is kind of boring, that's when Austin Hubbard is going to be able to move on the bottom and start to get his hips loose and start to create separation. Because Pichelle isn't that top tier kind of submission, I guess submission threat. So Hubbard can kind of give his back when he goes up to his feet. He can do a lot of things that you wouldn't normally see in his fights because I don't think he's going to be worried about the submission threat with Pichelle like he has been against some of his other guys. So again, for me, this fight comes down to not only the cardio of Hubbard, but how active will Pichelle be in that top position? Vince Pichelle's last wins by submission back on the Ultimate Fighter Season 15 against John Coffer and Cody Fister. Fister, Matt, in this fight, again, it all comes down to what game plan does Vince Pichelle have now out of Factory X? I think it's a great connection and a great way to get ready for a fight like this. All sorts of important training partners. We talked about it with Hernandez, but guys like Yusuf Salal and so on and so forth. A lot of interesting guys there. You know exactly what you're going to get out of Austin Hubbard. 58% takedown defense too in the UFC for Hubbard. You don't love it. It's only 20% for Pichelle, but again, he can win out in a lot of those scramble situations. You're going to take a negative hit against a guy like Gregor Gillespie and... He's able to get 3.83 per 15 minutes himself. That's absolutely insane. When I look at a fight like this, when I drop my notes, Austin Hubbard open a plus 140. He's a minus 110 right now. Those odds are at par. Pichelle open a minus 160. He's now at a minus 112. Matt, odds closing in on par. We'll have a look at topology. We haven't seen the votes. There they are, 1,137 total votes, 75% Pichel, 88% by decision. For the 25% that have Hubbard, 76% by decision. Both these guys are decision machines. I know the Roshkov fight, it was a lot of damage, and those leg kicks were great, and Hubbard was able to win. Surprised he would even throw leg kicks based on the compartmentalization syndrome. I like Hubbard in this fight. I know the way that we set it up. I think Pichel can come in with a great game plan. He could surprise me. Because I don't agree with the voters, I guess. So I'm kind of in a weird island that I'm on right now. It's Catalina Wine Mixer. Are you there too? No, I agree 100%. I think 35-year-old Vince Pichel could have at least made this fight a little bit competitive. But at a certain point, we do have to bring into consideration the fact that Austin Hubbard's nine years younger than Vince Pichel. And Austin Hubbard has great cardio for a guy who is 29. Like, I just think it, we've kind of seen this fight almost play out before. And I finally feel like this is the wrestler that Austin Hubbard will finally get over. He's starting to do a little bit better against and we saw glimpses of it in that Madison fight, I do feel like he's finally going to be able to get over that hump of, I just kind of lose to wrestlers every time out there. Interesting fight. Dakota Bush was able to get one of his total of Shut six up, takedowns in his last fight. And then for us and Hubbard, one of one. He had six minutes and 42 seconds of control time in that fight. Both of us going with Thud, Austin Hubbard to get the win. Let us know down below in the comments section who you have. You're not going to want to miss Question Mark Kicks two hours live before the prelims where we offer up our final picks and predictions after the weigh-ins. And keep it locked in because we got a lot of great stuff coming down the pipe. So as we always say, Matt, with Fight Night Picks, let's get into it.